Focusing on the Indian Air Force in eastern Ladakh and Siachen, we speak to Air Commodore DS Handa, the Air Officer Commanding Air Force Station Leh, on the IAF's role, challenges, assets and enhanced operational capabilities for the two-front China and Pakistan threat. The Himalayan Frontier Part 6 This is Strat News Global. I'm Amitabh Revi. We're extremely privileged to come to you from the Air Force Station Leh. And we have with us Air Commodore DS Handa, who's the Air Officer Commanding. Air Commodore, first of all, thank you so much, sir, for hosting us and giving us the opportunity of witnessing your operations, not just here, but all across East Ladakh. You're welcome, Amitabh. Air Commodore, if you could just elucidate for our viewers the role of the Air Force Station Leh. See, Air Force Station Leh uh, plays a very significant role in sustaining the entire military formations deployed in Ladakh area. Uh, be it through air maintenance, air logistic operations of not only Indian Army formation, but all the Indian Air Force formations also, which are deployed all along the line of actual control. Besides these air maintenance operations for military formations, we are also the lifeline for civil population of UT of Ladakh. This base, along with another base of Thois, are the only two bases where wide-bodied transport aircrafts like C-17s, IL-76, C-130s can land and bring in much needed supplies, ration, ammunition, all kinds of stores that not only military formation, even civil formations need. Also, the assets deployed at this base are critical towards search and rescue and casualty evacuation of any eventuality that happens in the rugged mountains of the Ladakh region. We've seen a couple of those medivacs uh, on our travels during this uh, shoot, uh, Air Commodore. We're seeing one of the assets and in fact hearing one of them as well up in the air. What can you tell us about uh, the assets that you have operational on the Air Force Station? See what uh, happened uh, post the Galwan crisis, a lot of uh, modern uh, assets got deployed at this base. Not only the fighter assets, which are nowadays are on 24-7 uh, operational readiness platform, but also modern radars as well as surface-to-air guided weapons, which have been deployed in a layer defense role. Uh, before Galwan, we were actually blind in this AOR. And post Galwan, all these modern assets got deployed at this base, as well as some critical forward location, wherein we could keep a close eye on the enemy all throughout. As you were saying, you were practically blind before Galwan. I don't know if you could again tell us about the operational capability that has been enhanced since then. Uh, the operational capability of uh, the full Indian Air Force, specifically in the Ladakh AOR, has significantly enhanced post Galwan. This is because uh, pre Galwan, there was primarily just uh, one resident uh, helicopter unit here and uh, only air maintenance uh, uh, operations were being under, undertaken. Post Galwan, because of the deployment of fighters at this base, deployment of radars, deployment of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance uh, operation capable aircraft and assets, now we are able to provide a layer defense to this region and we can assure you that none of the activity in the enemy territory can go unnoticed from now onwards. We've again witnessed some of uh, the issues at this altitude, at this temperature, at this time of the year. The challenges that you face, Air Commodore. See, there are a lot of challenges, both operational as well as survival challenges here. Operationally, I would say both uh, human resource as well as our equipment. The eff efficiency of these two assets goes down as much as by 30% because of the altitude and the kind of climate that is available here. The performance of the engines uh, deteriorates quite a lot. The batteries do not perform at that level. During winter months, which are almost five to six months at this pace, the survival itself becomes a big challenge at this pace. So that's why we have to conserve. In peacetime, we have to conserve our resources and ensure they are war ready at all time, even at this altitude, despite lack of oxygen, despite uh, uh, lack of, uh, uh, because of extreme temperature conditions that are available at this base and the rugged mountainous terrain that we follow. Even the performance of radars is limited. So we have to really find key locations and strategic locations where we can actually deploy these radars, not only for 
to be able to pick up significantly in, within the enemy, enemy territory, but also to be able to reach and maintain these systems at these locations. Air Commander, you mentioned post Galwan and how operational capabilities have been enhanced post that. But in this particular area, in in particular, you facing two fronts, and we've witnessed some of it in Siachen as well, where the Air Force is an absolutely strategic lifeline. Uh, see the way uh, this Air Force station is lifeline for the entire Ladakh region. In a similar manner. Uh, 114 HU, which operates uh, Cheetal helicopters, they are the lifeline for uh, uh, the, all our troops de deployed in Siachen Glacier. Uh, day in and day out, these helicopters drop in starting from first light in the morning. There are tons and tons of loads, uh, rations, supplies, ammunition, whatever they need is supplied onto these icy heights of Siachen glaciers. So, in effect, I mean, how would you respond to the country wanting to know how you are dealing with these two fronts? See, uh, the way to deal with these two fronts is uh, by uh, better tactics, by better deployments. Uh, in this mountainous terrain, we have to know what are the avenues of approach that enemy can take, what are those critical locations where we can deploy our radars, where we can deploy our assets, where we can deploy our SAGW surface to air guided weapon systems, so that if there is any threat in future, we can either, first of all pick up them in time and then respond to them in time. And rest assured, they are deployed at these locations. The Thois uh, airbase, which you mentioned a little earlier, Air Commodore, now that also has great strategic importance. Absolutely. Uh, Thois lies in a different valley altogether, in, in Shok Valley. And it is a base which is located at such a location that assets deployed at that base can be useful for both the fronts. They can be deployed even for our Western adversaries and even for our Northern adversary as well. Uh, all kinds of assets are capable of deployment at uh, uh, Thois as well, be it fighters, helicopters, transport aircrafts, radars, weapon systems, whatever you uh, name, are capable and we have been exercising uh, them all throughout. We also went on a separate axis apart from Siachen, which uh, looked at both the Manle helipad and uh, then the Neoma ALG and that has come up already tremendously, has vital importance again. See, besides uh, uh, Lay and Thois, there are three more ALGs located in this AR, uh, advanced landing grounds as we call them. One is at Neoma, Tangse and DBO. Neoma very soon, in a uh, couple of years from time, will become a full-fledged airfield. And if you understand, it is located just about 50 kilometers from line of actual control. So, uh, with that full airfield coming up and located at an altitude of 14,000 feet, close to 14,000 feet, our assets, the way they are being inducted at lay and then moved by road to those locations, they can be directly uh, deployed and landed, air landed at that helipad and that will be much faster for them to be at their uh, area of action wherever they want to be. Besides military significance, that airfield at Neoma is also going to be of quite a lot of significance from the point of view of uh, tourism in that area because uh, civil airfield will also come up in that location, the way air, air, civil airfield is also uh, doing a dual role at present. Just larger picture, I wanted to get your thoughts, uh, Air Commander, on what has the experience been with the induction of uh, Agni Vs? Oh, it has been a very good experience and these, these Agni Vs are highly motivated lot. They know they have to really perform well within these four years and uh, only then uh, the certain num uh, limited number of them will be retained in the Air Force. That's why they are motivated. On our part, we are ensuring that they are, uh, they are trained in the right manner. Not only their own stream which they have inducted into, but also uh, in the cross stream. So that even after four years, when 75% of the, them leave Air Force, they have the required knowledge and skill to be able to settle down in the civil street wherever they want to be. And they are of some value as good responsible citizens of India. Talking about responsible citizens here, we've, our team has witnessed the role of women in the Air Force, especially in uh, Ladakh area. I would like to just comment on that. Uh, yes, Amitabh, as of now, uh, in Leh, Air Force Station Leh specifically, I'll talk about Women are presently only in the officer order in every branch of the Air Force and they are uh, contributing significantly toward that. Although women as Agnivirs have been already inducted in other bases, at this base we are yet to induct them, mainly because of we don't have the right 
infrastructure in terms of accommodation for them. As soon as that accommodation is ready, this base will also be ready and we are looking forward to them to be part of this base as well in future. In this particular area, apart from anywhere else as well, a commando, the jointness that which is uh, extremely crucial of you operating with the army and other forces. And beaches. There's an overshoot he did and he had a rehit on, his uh, afterburners were on, okay. so that's where the sound. Super. Actually here, because when he overshoots, now he can't go straight, he has to turn immediately, because otherwise those hills will come in the way. You were talking about, we were talking about the joint with which uh, you operate with uh, other uh, military, I mean uh, army and uh, military forces. See, Amitabh, in Leh, uh, we cannot survive without each other. We are actually dependent upon each other quite a lot. Uh, be it at uh, Leh as such, uh, where the formation headquarters are located, or any of the forward locations. All our forward deployments are co-located with Indian Army formations. And we are dependent upon them for everything, be it Russian, be it supplies, be it security, be it uh, uh, coordination in terms of our plans, what we are going to do. Our exercises are joint nowadays. We regularly keep exercising. We know each other's plans. During peace times, we are ready what to do whatever new tactics or uh, modalities are worked out, they are shared with each other. So, uh, it is total interdependence in this AOR. And uh, again, talking about interdependence, uh, civil-military relations are very important aspect. Absolutely. Uh, here at Leh, uh, the civil administration is quite intermingled with military uh, formations as well. Uh, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh, being himself an uh, ex-military officer, he has ensured that the cooperation between military and civil has gone to the next level. And he is very energetic in the terms of whatever military needs, in terms of resources, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of coordination, is never denied by the civil administration. And it is because of this that uh, his foresight that he wants to further improve this area by making all these military airfields which are located in this area as dual use airfields. Even very soon, we are looking at Thois starting with civil flights. Kargil very soon will start civil flights. So a lot of efforts are being put in towards that and it can only happen when we have good relations between civil and military. And in terms of your assets, Comrade uh, Handa, Atma Nirbharta, indigenization, how is that progressing? See, uh, uh, quite a lot of our uh, helicopter and fighter assets are now getting produced within the country itself and that is really important. Uh, most of the foreign assets that we have right now or we have to either tweak them to operate at this location, at these altitudes. But when we have our own assets available, they can be demanded from within our engineers, our defense industry, that we want these parameters, these qualities, and these capabilities in this system, so as to be able to operate not only at uh, uh, lay, which is at around 10,000 feet, but even at uh, 15,000 feet, 18,000 feet, and beyond. And our own engineers are capable of doing that at lay, and at forward location, there are a lot of radars and weapon systems that we have inducted, which are indigenously produced. Now, these weapon systems are as capable of any other modern weapon systems that we have been importing in the past. Hey, Commodore Honda, again, it's been an absolute honor and a privilege to be here and witness the operations. Thank you for giving us this opportunity, sir. Thank you very much. You're most welcome once again. Thanks again, sir. Thank you. And for all our viewers to send us feedback uh, to this special interview that we're getting you uh, from the Le Air Force Station and the complete series with our team of uh, Rohit Pandita and Karan Marwa who are covering this. You can follow our social media handles, follow our Telegram channel for the latest that we put up on our website or uh, YouTube interviews like this with Air Commodore Honda. This is Amitabh Revi at the Le Air Force Station for Strat News Global. Coming up in the Himalayan Frontier Part 7, how the IF Air Force Station lays women, men and machines are honing their all-weather readiness during another winter against the two-front threat from China and Pakistan. <laughs>